Uh, exciting time of year, obviously. Uh, looking forward to the start of the season. Just, I think, no different than all the teams around the country. Just very eager to get going after uh, preseason and regular season beginning Monday night. How do you, do you try and talk to the guys about, I don't know, finding that balance between playing with emotion but also trying to keep it in, in check too for the first game? Yeah, you know, actually I've been thinking about that a lot because, um, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful next year that we can do exhibition game or charity exhibition, whatever you call it, as opposed to these scrimmages where no one's in the building. So we know there'll be great energy Monday night in the building. Our guys will be excited. And to be quite honest with you, I don't think it matters if you're a six-year senior like C.J. Walker or you're a freshman like Tybo Bailey or Reed Kaysen or LaDante Felton. I think there's an energy and an excitement to the start of the season. And I think R.J., C.J., our older players, our vets will feel it. And I think the young guys will. So I think that's a good thing, though. That's kind of those butterflies that you want in sports and competition. But I'm hopeful next year to be able to play a game earlier in the season, maybe in October, where they get a chance to get in front of fans, whether it's at home or on the road. I think that's a good thing. So, yeah, I'm sure we'll have to temper some of those emotions and, and energy early in the game. How have you seen your guys come together from the start of the semester to now? Love, I love this team. I love this team. We love practice every day. The way this team uh, competes every day in practice, the way they go at it from a physical physical standpoint, but then this team is very tight off the court, and I think that's a big part uh, of when you talk about the team coming in together is the way they spend time with each other off the court, the amount of the way they are just connected as a group on and off the court. So I love this team, and, and that's really shown in practice. How are you seeing the new guys buy into the culture here? That's probably been one of the most exciting things about it. As much as the returners, the RJs and Cams, embrace those guys and as they came in, those guys stepping right in and putting two feet in into the way we want to do things and buying in to say, hey, this is what we do at ECU, whether it's offensively, defensively, off the court, culture, so to speak. But the, the new guys have really put two feet in and have been, that's why we talk about one ECU because that, that's really what those new guys have done and that's helped us be a connected group. What boxes do you want to see your guys check come Monday night against NC Wesleyan? Do what we practice. Do what we've been practicing. There's certain identity points that we really want to have that will continue to grow as the season goes on. It doesn't matter whether it's November, December, February, March. It doesn't make a difference. But the ones right now are defensive pressure and our defensive rebounding, and on the offensive side of the ball, we want to take care of the basketball and offensive rebound. Really, those are four areas. Again, there's so much to it, but those are really four big areas that we focused on in the preseason. You mentioned the defensive pressure. How do you feel like those new guys and the length they kind of bring us kind of added to that in practice? I think they've made us a lot better at it. I think we, I think in year three here, we, I think we have a team that looks the way we've envisioned as a coaching staff in terms of long, athletic, strong wings, big guards, and versatile forwards. And when you think about some of the guys, and I'm so excited for Pirate Nation to get to, to see our new guys and meet the new guys and, and get a chance to know this team. Uh, but from a physical standpoint, from an athletic standpoint, it really uh, it plays into the way we want to play defensively. How was RJ continue to grow as a leader coming into this year? Well, his leadership is, is – always been there especially in the locker room we've talked about it a lot right here and after games and whatnot he's always been a great leader in the locker room he's been a great leader on the court with his guys because he cares so much about his teammates what he's physically doing right now is the ball's in his hands more as a guard he's leading the break in transition at times he's playing off of ball screens more he's making decisions in transition and i think when you i mean he's even played some backup point for us in terms of different lineups that we've had through the preseason so i think when you combine what he's done what he's poured into ecu in his three years so far the way he is in the locker room and now he's playing sometimes with the ball in his hands more directing the offense making sure we're doing what we're doing i think it's just a natural leadership leadership growth form. Speaking of RJ, what's it like having another Felton on the team and, and how, how much of an impact is he going to have this year? You know what, uh, first part is great because again, we always talk about brotherhood in basketball. You talk about guys putting their arms around guys and we're a family. That's what everyone talks about in sports. Well, we get to kind of see it firsthand here because we literally have a family member on the team and RJ does a phenomenal job like he does with all his teammates putting his arm around LaDante, helping him, helping him get through typical freshman issues that all freshmen would go through. The next part of it is this is LaDante and RJ are two totally different players. And, you know, and RJ does what he does. LaDante is a freshman that's learning. He's growing. He's gotten so much better since he's been here. From a standpoint of impact LaDante has, I think the redshirt thing is a very real possibility. And, again, it's more because of what freshmen and the climate of college athletics right now, when you talk about an older team, we finally have that older team now. 
all those years that we, those first two years, we look at the rosters of the other teams, redshirt senior, redshirt junior, fifth year senior, we see that all the time. Well, now we got a few of those guys. And that's what we've been trying to build. And we have an older team. So freshmen will have to grow in that. And Ladante is no different. With the, I know you don't put too much of an emphasis on the starting five, but I don't know if you thought about how you will handle that and I don't know, any hints you can give us? No, you know what? I, I told the guys this. In, in our opinion, we think we have nine guys that are capable that we could throw out with the combination. We'll obviously have a rotation. You're only allowed to start five at a time. I'm not someone that wants to change the lineup a, a bunch if we don't have to. There'll be adjustments that happen. But we have a rotation and that rotation. But again, I look at it like we have nine guys that are capable of being in that starting lineup. And then with Wesleyan, if, you know, perhaps a smaller team, how do you try to handle that as far as line, you know, do you look at playing the CJ at a five, depending on what happens? I guess it kind of depends on game flow. Yeah, I think, something. you know, we've talked about yeah. this before, Steve. We, we're going to make necessary adjustments as the game goes. That's normal. But we're going to go into it doing what we do and, and, you know, have to make those adjustments. Look, Coach Thompson is a really great coach. He's been there a long time. They're a team. They're a downhill driving team. We know they're going to drive the basketball. They want to throw the ball inside. There's a lot of old North Carolina influence behind what Coach Thompson does. So we're going to have to adjust to that, to the speed and the, and the attacking downhill. And, again, with our rotation and with the guys on the bench, we're going to have to make those adjustments. So we we got to be us. We're, we're still going into – we have two more practices leading into the, into the game, and we got to make sure that, that our identity is right. You have new guys coming in, but they bring experience. <laughs> How important is that? Experience is everything in college basketball right now. And I've said this many times, with the four transfers that we have, true transfers out of the portal, and the two junior college transfers that we have, they've all been really well coached before they got here. All the Division I programs that the four transfers came from, so much respect for those programs and the coaches that gave them great fundamentals and foundation. And then the two junior college players, the same thing. Come, you know, those two guys, Jay Shane and Trevion coming in. So uh, that experience is really vital right now because a lot of time you're trying to put a lot of work into a short time. You get a player and you get one off season with them. Hopefully you get two or three, but the way it worked with this team, nine new players, three freshmen, six transfers, four division one transfers, two junior college. So the experience and the coaching those guys had coming in definitely is beneficial. What are the advantages and disadvantages of starting the season with a division three team? Uh, I don't look at it like that one bit. It's that North Carolina Wesleyan is our opponent Monday night. There is zero advantage or disadvantage. That's who we got to go play, and we're approaching it the same way we'll approach every single game on the year. As far as characteristics of this team, what should fans expect when they come in Monday night? Uh, a hard-playing team that's going to pressure, pressure the ball on defense, that we're going to play a faster tempo this year on offense. I know we've done it at times in our first two seasons, but I know this. The, the fans should know this is going to be a highly competitive, physical, defensive pressure team, and then we'll see where that leads to. What do you know now in year three that you wish you knew in year one? What the rules were going to be in college basketball when I got this job two years ago uh, in terms of the transfer portal and NIL and how all that has played into the way you have to try and build a team. Uh, again, I say this many times in recruiting, you're doing two to three years of recruiting now in two months, two to three months. And if I had known that two years ago, maybe our approach right when we got here could have been a little bit different. Uh, you know, we really tried to attack in-state recruiting, high school recruiting, retention. Retention will never change. Bringing North Carolina players here, and students here will never change. But the way you go about it and the way you have to do that intel and homework from the months of March to June is totally different than it was two years ago. So obviously if I could uh, you know, jump in that DeLorean and jump back and, and go back two years and know, uh, you know, I probably have made that adjustment. But I did say this, and you guys can look it. I said we'll make the adjustments if we have to as the portal changes and transfer and all these NCAA rules change because it was the beginning of it. We said if we got to adjust, we will, and we've made that adjustment. I'd be, rem I'd be remiss if I didn't ask about your Dodgers. Uh, what's this week been like uh, celebrating them? What, what happened? <laughs> you yeah, guys got to ask your players, it, right? It worked out perfect yesterday. The, the Dodgers win the World Series. That's exciting. We got a great group of New York guys. We love New York City here. But it worked out perfect with Halloween, the Dodgers winning, the last day of October. But it's basketball season now. Where'd you get that mask? I just can't tell you. <laughs>